Well, those numbers from China that we were talking about earlier have led to a subdued beginning of the week in main European stock markets. Uh, buoyant Japanese stocks, though, led Asian markets to some modest gains, partly thanks to the delaying of a sales tax by Shinzo Abe's government in Tokyo. Yes, we'll talk in more detail a bit about this and other matters. We're joined by Jamil Ahmed, Chief Research Analyst at FXTM. I'm just uh, l looking back to those um, Bank of England, uh, the comments by the Governor Mark Carney, dominating headlines with uh, his comments uh, over a Brexit outcome, possibly leading to a technical recession. What do you make of those comments? Well, thank you very much for having me, firstly. Um, basically, guys, those comments, while they were seen as a little bit of extreme, I think what the markets are disappointed at and spectators is that it was seen as being a bit of a Barack Obama in terms of trying to sway investors and voters against voting for an exit. But i tell you something, guys. Mr. Carney is actually quite right to express an opinion, not so much about UK entering a technical recession, but that a Brexit could have great implications on both the UK economy and the global economy as a whole. So on a day-by-day -day basis, when investors are going about making their decisions about whether to, to buy or sell, where are they pricing in the trend in terms of the likelihood of a Brexit? What are they basing that, those kind of uh, bets on? Well, I've got to be honest with you guys. I think that the risks of a Brexit have still been severely underpriced in both the currency markets and the financial markets as a whole. And I've got to be honest with you. Let's go back down memory lane just less than one year ago. And we were talking about a little part of the global economy called Greece possibly leaving the European Union. And the markets were in complete pandemonium over this. We've got to be honest. A Brexit has far more severe implications to the global economy than a Brexit ever would. A, a Brexit, I think you mean. But what are the actual chances? I mean, what are the markets reading into the chances of it at this stage? I think there is going to be a lot of swings and roundabouts on the as we get closer to the vote. I mean, personally, many investors probably learned a lesson from the Scottish referendum two years ago not to discount the chances of an actual exit. And because of this, I think the sterling is going to be very volatile in the weeks leans in the vote. And we still have not priced in the risk over a possible exit. The expectation uh, from other camps is that the British pound could then regain all the losses if a Brexit, if indeed happened. If there was a, I think they call it a <laughs> remain. If the UK did remain in the European Union, it is likely that a British pound would bounce. Yeah. But you know what, in the bigger picture, UK economic growth is slowing. Mm -hmm. Leading indicators across all PMIs are dropping lower, services, industries, manufacturing, and UK economic growth as a whole is slowing. Mm -hmm. Export demand is also likely dipping lower. There's global risks out there, such as weakness in the emerging markets. And this paints the bigger picture that the Bank of England is still very far away from raising interest rates. And it limits the possibility for me to see the pound surge that much higher in the medium term. Okay. Jamil Ahmed from FXTM. Brexit, Remain, those are two <laughs> ugly, <laughs> ugly new words that I hope to forget very soon. Uh, thank you very much for joining us.